morning San Antonio starts right now. This morning on GMSA, a driver now facing charges after a bad wreck on the city's west side. We hear from police what they're saying about the people who were hurt. And what you're looking at is a live shot of the Vatican in Italy as the Easter Vigil Mass continues while churches around the world get ready for services. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, 56 degrees. We know a lot of people out and about, they are camping over this Easter weekend. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey, see what they're experiencing out there and about. But for now, good morning to 6 o'clock. Happy Easter. It is Sunday. It is April 9th. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Happy Easter. Did you make it out and about yesterday? I did. Okay. It ended up being a beautiful day. Just like Sarah Spivey called it, the clouds parted, the yeah. sun came out. It was picture perfect out Gorgeous. there. Gorgeous. Sunny, high of 75, low humidity. Guess what? We're going to do it again today. But we are starting off with some fog. So if you're heading out for that early morning mass or maybe just an early morning Easter service, know that there are areas of patchy fog out there. Around the airport, visibility is fine, but you go up to New Braunfels, you can start to see visibility comes down a bit, nine mile visibility especially up in the hill country out near Bernie visibility is down to a quarter of a mile down to less than a mile in Kerrville as well this morning and you can actually see on some of the trans guide cameras here some of that patchy fog there off in the distance if you are planning on uh, spending some time outdoors a lot of us are everything looks great for any kind of uh, Easter egg scavenger hunts or anything like that temperatures will be warming up pretty nicely we'll have mostly cloudy skies by 10 so that fog will lift 61 degrees for the high, though, this afternoon, 75. Gorgeous outside. Now, as we look ahead, though, there is the potential for some rain tomorrow, about 40% coverage of showers and storms. I'm going to walk you through hour by hour the future cast tomorrow, get you ready for the week ahead with that chance for rain tomorrow. Details coming up. Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Three people are in the hospital after an overnight accident on San Antonio's west side. So this is what we know right now. It happened outside a business along South General McMullen Drive near Castroville Road. Alyssa Cole is there right now live with more details about this accident. Good morning, Alyssa. What do we know? Yes, good morning. Well, we know two of the three people involved in that accident were children and we're told it happened here in this area when the driver was pulling out of a nearby auto zone that's how they identified it they also tell us that when the the driver crashed into the SUV, they have no reason on why they had that happened they're investigating that right now now it's unknown but Police did move forward in their investigation. They decided to give that driver of the vehicle that caused the accident T-boning into the SUV with the four people inside. They decided to give that driver a field sobriety test. Well, the results did, you know, push them to take the direction of arresting that person and taking them in arrest under suspicion of DWI. And we're told he could possibly be charged with three counts of intoxication assault. But for now, reporting on the west side, Alyssa Cole, case at 12 News. Alyssa, thank you. A delivery driver returning to work after being out arrived to find another employee being held at gunpoint in a robbery. And now San Antonio police are searching for the suspects. This happened in Southeast Military near South New Braunfels Avenue. The store employee told SAPD several people were involved and waited until the store was empty before allegedly holding it up. The robbers allegedly tried to open the safe but were unsuccessful. However, police say they still left with money from the register. In your morning headlines, police in Delaware are investigating a shooting at a popular mall near the University of Delaware in New York. Investigators say someone shot three people at that mall on Saturday. Paramedics took victims to a hospital for treatment while the mall was closed. Police say the shooter is not in custody and authorities are looking for that suspect. Right now, it's unclear what sparked the shooting. All right, so now to a story we first told you about yesterday. That fight unfolding in the U.S. courts over the widely used abortion pill. It's been on the market for 20 years, and we now have a big update. That's right. A ban could impact every state, and the case could go to the Supreme Court. ABC's Karina Mitchell has the latest. A court battle over conflicting rulings in two different states. A federal judge in Texas ruling to suspend the FDA's approval of Mifepristone, a medication that is used in more than half of U.S. abortions. The judge writing that the FDA's, quote, lack of restrictions resulted in many deaths and many more severe or life-threatening adverse reactions. The Justice Department acting quickly, filing an appeal just hours after the decision. Some anti-abortion advocates praising the judge's ruling. 
Well, it was certainly a victory. It was one that we've been praying for for some time. The FDA says it will appeal, saying it, quote, stands behind its determination that mifepristone is safe and effective. The FDA approved the drug in 2000, and it is legal in 18 states and is the first of two drugs that can abort pregnancies in the first 11 weeks. Mifepristone is an exceptionally effective and safe medication to use for first trimester terminations of pregnancy. But the FDA has continued to, if anything, overly monitor this drug to make sure that it continues to be safe and effective. A federal judge in Washington state also making a ruling on the drug, ordering to keep the status quo, writing, quote, abortion restrictions vary state by state and plaintiffs allege harm not shared nationwide. This week, all eyes will turn to the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals in New Orleans, a very conservative court. That's where the Justice Department will seek an extended stay of the Texas judge's decision, allowing Mifepristone to remain in use as this all gets sorted out. Whatever the outcome there, it's certain to be bound for the Supreme Court. President Biden saying his administration will fight the Texas ruling. Karina Mitchell, ABC News, New York. Well, staying here in Texas, Governor Greg Abbott working to pardon an Army sergeant convicted of murder, of a deadly shooting, and a protester in downtown Elsa. Now, all of this happened back in 2020. Daniel Perry, he was convicted of murder just this past Friday for that shooting that happened in July of 2020. At the time of the shooting, he was working for a rideshare company. Now, in July of 2020, he turned down the street, went towards a large crowd of protesters. Those protesters were taking action against police violence and racial injustice. Court records show after a series of events, it ended with the suspect opening fire, hitting 28-year-old Garrett Foster. He was shot several times. He then died at the hospital. Now, the suspect facing life in prison, but Governor Greg Abbott has requested that the Board of Pardons and Parole, they look at the case, determine if he should be pardoned in an expedited review. Well, right now on KSAT.com, the Texas House has approved a historic $302 billion state budget plan for the next two years. The plan includes $17.5 billion for property tax cuts, $5 billion in new money for schools, and $4.6 billion on border security. The budget plan also leaves tens of billions of dollars in unspent general revenue available after record-breaking tax collections left the state flush with more cash. The state's $37.2 billion surplus is higher than the entire budgets of 24 states. You can read what else is on that plan on KSAT.com. All right, before we go to break, we want to give you another live look at the Vatican. Look at that. It's beautiful. This is in Italy as the Easter Vigil Mass continues while churches around the world get ready for services. Now, Pope Francis has already led the Mass and spoke for two hours and gave his blessing to the city and to the world. I know a lot of people here in San Antonio will be heading out to Sunday service or Masses early this morning. All right, time now, 6.08, 56 degrees out. Well, still to come on GMSA, Star Wars fans can expect three new movies oh. in the near future. After a huge announcement from Disney, that's coming up before 6.30. I just watched The Rise of Skywalker yesterday. A little behind. A little behind. <laughs> I had to catch up in anticipation of the new movies. Okay. All right, so you know who's also a little behind? Spurs. <laughs> Their last game in Austin didn't have, have fans really excited, but season is almost over so there you go and that means we're closer to the draft we're pretty much locked in for a top three pick let's hope so There's some optimism on top of some negative news there we go <laughs> 56 degrees at 608 it was beautiful yesterday mm -hmm. sarah spivey says we we're gonna do it again oh. <laughs> we'll have our easter sunday forecast when we come back Go Spurs, go. So the Spurs' last game in Austin, much different than the first one, and not exactly the finale that fans were looking for. An inspired first quarter effort was enough to keep pace with the Timberwolves, who were actually fighting for a spot to make it in the postseason. So the Timberwolves take control 45 seconds into the quarter, and they would finish with 151 points on the season. Yeah, there's former Spur, Mr. Anderson. So uh, it's actually the most points ever conceded by a Spurs team in the Greg Popovich era. And the Timberwolves won by 20. Not a great look, still a silver lining for the silver and black. Trey Jones finished with a triple-double. Trey Triple, what we're gonna call him today. 21 points, 12 assists, 10 rebounds. He became the fifth Spurs ever to post multiple triple-doubles in the same season. So it wasn't pretty, but it looked like the stadium was full. Spurs wrap up the regular season this afternoon, taking on the Dallas Mavericks, who are also flailing. Fun fact, 
This marks the first time in 40 years, guys, that no Texas team will play in the playoffs. So Mavs didn't make it, barely. Kyrie Irving didn't help. Houston Rockets, they're in the bottom three with us. And obviously the Spurs, we've been monitoring their season day to day. So mm. what is our best case scenario? Best case scenario, we get the number one pick. We get for, uh, Victor Wembayana, who's like 7'5". Yes. Wow. And he's, he's like, if you watch his highlights, tall. it's absurd. And then you pair him with Keldon Johnson. You get our three rookies, Malachi Brandon, who's looked fantastic. Jeremy Sohan. I mean, we have a good team that could build together in the future. All Let's right. go, Spurs. Yeah. Come on. Go, Spurs, go. Go, Spurs, go. We love you no matter what. Yeah. Um, the weather today is going to be beautiful, but it is starting off a little foggy and gray out there right now. Uh, but happy Easter, everyone. I want to walk you through your forecast, get you through the day. Take a look outside right now with live cam. You can see those low-level clouds there on the horizon just above the lights of the airport. Uh, that ceiling uh, for the clouds are going to lower a little bit over the next hour or so. So we may start to see patchy fog around San Antonio, although visibility is fine right now. 56 degrees outside. It's a little cool. You may want that light jacket out there this morning, but elsewhere we are seeing fog start to uh, thicken up quite a bit. Visibility down to half a mile in Yavaldi, down to three quarters of a mile in Kerrville. We can, as we zoom in to Bear County here, you look up I-10, Bernie Stage Airfield right on that Kendall and Bear County line. That's where we're seeing some of the densest fog. Visibility is down to a quarter of a mile. So if you have plans to head up I-10 on the north side of town, know that you'll be running into some fog as you head into Kendall County and eventually into Kerr County near to Kerrville. We've also got some denser fog out near Uvalde right now. But as I mentioned, it is cool this morning. 56 at the airport, 58 in New Braunfels, 57 in Hondo, 54 in Bandera, and 53 in Kerrville. But in your KSAT 12-hour forecast today, that fog should lift after about 9 o'clock. We'll have east winds at about 5 to 10 miles per hour, mostly cloudy skies by 10, so a few peaks of sunshine by 10, 61, and then around noon, 65 degrees. After all of the Easter services, it's going to be a great afternoon for any kind of Easter egg hunts or any kind of activities outdoors, 75 degrees for the high under partly cloudy skies. Here's a look at neighborhood high temperatures today. Del Rio, you'll be at 78. Gonzales, 75. 75 in Pleasanton, 77 in Hondo, 75 in Kerrville, 75 in Rock Springs, and 75 in New Braunfels. As we take a look at our weather setup, a wider view here, you'll notice that there's a sliver of showers from all the way up in uh, parts of Minnesota to the panhandle of Texas. This is along a trough of low pressure and an, a, an elongated area of low pressure that's going to be slowly pushing to the east over the next day or so. The source of some energy for us to see a little bit of rain tomorrow. Not everybody is going to see rain, but early tomorrow morning there's a chance about 30% coverage for a few streamer showers by about 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. So during the morning commute, some people will be turning on their windshield wipers. Then by about uh, lunch, we'll start to see some storms move in from the north. There is a chance that they may not make it all the way south, but we're going to hedge our bets right now and call it about a 40% chance in the afternoon as these storms try to push south. And you can see that the better chances for rain will be west of San Antonio. Still though, I do think that there's the potential right around the evening commute to see some scattered downpours and we'll have to watch these storms to see if they can strengthen. Sometimes whenever those storms originate from the north like that, they can contain some small hail. We'll be keeping an eye on things for you. Coverage is only going to be 40%, so not everybody is going to be seeing rain and it's a conditional forecast. Meaning, if those storms don't develop up north of us, we won't be seeing them moving south into San Antonio. But we'll keep an eye on things for you. Otherwise, the week ahead looks really, really nice. We'll be looking at highs gradually warming into the low 80s by Thursday and Friday. Low humidity, too. Uh, but more on what you can expect for that rain coming up in the next half hour. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 617, 56 degrees out. After the break, the San Antonio Brahma is giving back Aww. to families for the Easter holiday what it means to the players before a game this afternoon. Welcome back. Players from San Antonio Brahmas are spending time with family for Easter weekend. Here's the catch. It's not their own family. They're actually spending time with families living at the Salvation Army Emergency Shelter. They were invited to stop by, meet people, play some games with kids. Organizers say it is an amazing way, a meaningful way to give back to our local community. Players say it warmed their heart to be around everyone. 
Coming here, this really, you know, brightening up our day. You know, you know, we're coming down here for a football game, but we got to, you know, meet new people today, meet some kids that really care, and you know, put smiles on their faces, and they came and embraced us, and we want to embrace them. All right, so the Brahmas back at the dome this afternoon for Easter Sunday football. We're gonna have a full preview of that game coming up at 6:30. And if you're out and about for the Easter holiday today, don't forget there might be some closures in your area. We're not talking about road closures. We're talking about store closures. HEB is closed today. I went late last night in a nice. panic as I remembered that. <laughs> Central Market's closed today, but a lot of other stores are closed. But there are some that are open for those emergencies. Just head to ksat.com and you'll find a full list of what's opened and what's closed today. All right, time now, 622, 56 degrees out. Up next, three new Star Wars movies. They're coming out in the near future. What fans can expect in theaters in your morning spotlight. In your morning spotlight, three new Star Wars movies are in the works. Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kennedy says the films will be taking place in different times. Oh. One will be set in the deep past. One is set to take place 15 years after the events of the 2019 film Rise of Skywalker, Max's favorite movie. <laughs> and the last will be set in the present and close out the current Disney Plus series, The Mandalorian. All right, so we have time, so I'm just going to go off on this. Okay. We've I, been we've I, just going over all the Star Wars movies. I love Rey. I think she's fantastic. Right. She's great. Uh, I love Finn. Uh, I love the third of the whatever. <laughs> that little, like, triumvirate they got going on. <laughs> so I did not like, I just watched it yesterday. And, and Max isn't, like, a hardcore Star Wars fan either. This is, no. this is a good take because it's someone who's kind of come in right. series so later Right. So I've on. been watching Star Wars my entire life. Like, I saw the original 80s ones, watched uh, episode one through three. I liked one through three. I know oh, uh, oh. Phantom Menace was a big controversy for a lot oh. of people. Qui-Gon Jinn, that's my guy. Oh. oh. So... <laughs> I watched The Rise of Skywalker over the last two days because it's two hours and 28 minutes. It's rough. Uh, you know, it was, I just, it didn't match up with the original movies. No, it like doesn't. they started adding like Harry Potter esque so wizardry, I, and I'm like, I love this how, is not like, Star Wars anymore. I'm not a hardcore Star Wars fan notices that. And yeah. I'm not a hardcore, I just grew up with. Of course. Like my brothers. Yeah, I had hardcore. the action figures. I mean,. Well, they watch it. They were they're like good. teleporting and like they're pulling out lightsabers out of nowhere. I'm like, the lightsaber just turned into two. Anyway, if you're a Star Wars fan, good luck. God bless. Time now, 626, <laughs> 56 degrees out. Okay, coming up at 630, a 17-year-old ends up in the hospital after what police call a drive-by shooting. The latest on his conditions and the search for suspects. Plus... Texas honey, it should be from Texas, but I don't think that jail time or anything like that would be necessary. Making sure Texas honey is actually from Texas. It's always a good thing, but a local beekeeper says it's easier said than done. We hear from her about a proposed bill going on right now in the Texas House. You're looking live right now at the Vatican in Italy as the Easter Vigil Mass continues while churches around the world get ready for services. Pope Francis already delivering his homily for Easter Sunday. And I know a lot of people are also getting ready to go to Mass and services this morning for Easter. Good morning. That's right. So if you are awake with us, join us. Thank you so much for starting your Sunday with us. It is April 9th. Happy Easter to you Happy and Easter. to you. I love the the flower, the floral going Thank on. You. Look I tried. At you. I tried with the pastels today. You did great, Max. I was a little upset. I'm like every morning. I'm like calling a costa. I'm like, what are we doing today? I, I you hit me with navy. That was like not I a good. I tend to wear a lot of darker colors. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm getting better. Yeah. You know, Max. Sarah Spivey. I think you should. Pull a Mike Osterhage mm. next year. I think you should wear a seersucker suit oh, for I Easter. Thought, I thought you were going to say a bunny suit. I was like, Mike, how could you? <laughs> that would be weird. <laughs> but I, I'm saying a seersucker suit would be really nice. A lot of Max's Yeah, box. we'll see. Okay. I'm not a yacht club guy. Like <laughs> not a yacht club guy. That's what he said. All right. So if you are planning on heading out early this morning for any kind of services, first thing to know, 
Further north you go into the hill country, there are areas of fog. Take a look at Bernie Sage Airfield. Uh, you can see visibility down to a quarter of a mile, down to three quarters of a mile up in Kerrville, and we're even starting to see some fog creep into the west side near Port SA. In fact, you can actually see that on the trans guide. If you can go back to 13 there, Sarah, what you can see is this is at Bernie Stage Airfield. You can see as you're heading up north, the fog has developed. And then even further up north at Comfort, you can see on I-10 that it is very dense. The fog is very dense. So take care if you're across the hill country this morning. That's where the fog is a little bit more intense. 58 degrees in New Braunfels, 57 in Hondo, 57 in Gonzales, 55 in Yavaldi, and 55 in Rock Springs. Closer to San Antonio area, cooler uh, out in Seguin where it's 56 right now this morning and 55 in Holotus. So a light jacket needed out there early this morning. However, we are going to see that fog lift as early as 10 o'clock this morning. We'll be looking at uh, some patchy fog and, and things will clear out for us. By noon, it'll be 65, 75 in the afternoon. So a gorgeous afternoon for any kind of luncheons or things like that going on today. Beautiful today, but we do have a chance for some showers and storms tomorrow. I'll walk you through that forecast in just a few minutes. Sarah and Max. Thank you, Sarah. Three people in the hospital after an overnight crash on the San Antonio's west side. It happened outside a business along South Jerome McMullen Drive near Castroville Road. Alyssa Cole live right now. So Alyssa, what do we know about this crash? Yes, you all, good morning. We know two out of the three people that were sent to the hospital were children. Now, this is what police tell us. They say this all happened just around 1230 this morning. A driver was pulling out of a parking lot of a nearby auto zone on General McMullen when the when he crashed into an SUV with four people inside. Three of those people, including the two kids, were taken to University Hospital. It's unknown why the driver ran into the SUV, T-boned the SUV with the four people inside, but police decided to move forward in their investigation by carrying out a field sobriety test on the driver. He was then taken into custody under suspicion of DWI, and we're told he could possibly be charged with three counts of intoxication assault. Reporting on the west side, Alyssa Cole, KSAT 12 News. San Antonio police say a drive-by shooting ended with a 17-year-old in the hospital with a gunshot in the back. Right now, he's listed as critical condition. Officers say it happened at this home in the 2500 block of West Cesar Chavez Boulevard near South Galaveta Street after 7.30 last night. So far, police don't have a description of any suspects but they were given a possible description of a suspect vehicle, a newer model sedan that could have been gray or beige. And a 56 year old man is in custody accused of stabbing his father and barricading himself from San Antonio police inside a home on the city's west side. So this all happened after 1030 yesterday morning. This is the 7000 block of Shady Grove Drive. It's near West Military Drive and Marbach Road. So 56 year old Edward Garcia being held now on a $50,000 bond on aggravated assault charges with a deadly weapon and possession of a controlled substance. Now, a neighbor, Julio Cantu, saw Garcia's 82-year-old father right after the alleged stabbing, called 911 for help. He says that he was shocked at what transpired. Something to do that, especially to your own parents. I think that's something that's, tr something triggered it. So San Antonio police eventually arrived, taking the 82-year-old father to the hospital. Good news, he is expected to survive. Well, Uvalde CISD Interim Superintendent Gary Patterson is releasing a statement about that viral video showing a DPS officer shoving the mother of one of the Robb Elementary victims during a national school walkout day. So this was after that mom, Ana Rodriguez, attempted to check one of her other children out of school. In a 677 word statement, Patterson writing not only a response to the video, but also some context behind their thoughts surrounding several topics, including anxiety about gun discussions, the pending one year mark at Robb Elementary, and increased media attention, just to name a few of his priorities. Now, Patterson says any discussion around the people in the video will be and should remain private and confidential. That statement also posed a lot of questions related to the video and other situations surrounding the Rob shooting, but no solution or answers were given. DPS has released body cam footage of the same incident as a way to be transparent with the community. 
The identity of the DPS trooper has not been released and an investigation is underway. To watch all the video and to read prior release statements from officials, head to our website, ksat.com. Well, every year, the San Antonio Chamber of Commerce participates in SA to DC. It is a trip for local leaders to go to our nation's capital and advocate on our city's behalf. This year was full of key priorities. So later this morning at 8 a.m. on Leading SA, we're speaking with the leadership of the Chamber of Commerce. We're going to be discussing the talking points that was emphasized in Washington, D.C., history of the program, including a lot of the successes over the years, and how you can get involved, how you can have your voice heard. If you have any questions you'd like to ask, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. Before we go to break, you're looking live at the Vatican in Italy as Easter Vigil Mass continues while churches around the world get ready for services. I know there was a lot of concern if Pope Francis was going to actually be celebrating the Vigil Mass today with his health scares uh, last week, but he was able to lead the Mass. He spoke for two hours and gave his blessing to this city and to around the world. We want to wish Everyone, a happy Easter out there. I know a lot of people will be going to Easter Mass and services this morning. All right, time now is 638, 56 degrees out. Still ahead on GMSA, San Antonio FC returned home to defend Toyota Field against one of the best teams in the Western Conference. Those highlights from last night, plus. Uh, if you label it as raw Texas or pure Texas honey, it should be from Texas, to, to the best of your knowledge. It Making sure Texas honey is actually from Texas. It's always a good thing. We hear from a local beekeeper who tells us it's easier said than done. And we actually hear from her how she's going to react to a proposed bill going through the Texas legislature. 56 degrees at 638. Sarah Spivey says oh, there's a little bit of fog in the area early this morning. She says it's going to shape up to be a beautiful day, though, for Easter Sunday. She'll have our forecast when we come back. Good morning and welcome back. So this morning, a new piece of proposed legislation it could have a huge impact on beekeepers in and around our area. This is very interesting. So a Texas House bill would crack down on what could legally be called Texas honey. Lee Waldman spoke with a local woman who says this could help small beekeepers like herself. In between the rooster crows, there's a faint hum from Nicole Poor's bees. I just made this hive okay. um, with a new queen. So I can open it up and double check just to make sure that she's out of her little cage. Amongst her goats, chickens and roosters are pours 11 hives where she harvests homegrown Texas honey out of Hondo. Can't make medical claims, but uh, a lot of my customers do tell me that they do like to have honey, especially at allergy season because it helps them uh, feel better. All of the honey she sells at farmers markets comes from her own backyard, but that's not the case for all honey labeled pure Texas honey. Some commercial beekeepers will take their hives to other states to pollinate or supplement a low honey supply with a blend from another place. The proposed Texas House Bill 590 would make it a misdemeanor to label it Texas honey if it's not exclusively happening all within the Lone Star State. Uh, if you label it as raw Texas or pure Texas honey, it should be from Texas to, to the best of your knowledge. If this proposed bill were to pass, those who mislabel honey could face jail time. Poor thinks that's a step too far. If they want to buy Texas honey, it should be from Texas, but I don't think that jail time or anything like that would be necessary. I think a fine would be perfect. So that was Lee Waldman reporting. Now, right now, House Bill 590 is being sent to the Senate where Water, Agriculture and Rural Affairs Committee will have further discussion on it. Really interesting topic here and we'll keep everyone updated as we get those updates. So I'm a big fan of local honey. Go to the farmer's market, mm -hmm. try to get as much. Yeah. As I, and I don't know if this is scientifically backed, but I like to think the honey helps with my allergies. And, and like you said, it's anecdotal. Yeah, I, I've spoken to the allergists about this. It's anecdotal. If it works for you, great, you know. But we should be supporting native, oh, absolutely native honey for our native pollinators and selling native honey. It tastes great too. Yeah, absolutely. All right, there's going to be a lot of tasty food out there, I'm sure, for a lot of Easter Sunday luncheons and things like that. Let's get you planned for the day today. First thing to know is that if you're heading out for mass or church services this morning, there is there are areas of fog. It is cool too, so grab a light jacket. You won't regret it. Early this morning, it's 56 degrees. Here's a look at the visibility though. You can see very clearly 
really where the fog is, mainly up across the hill country and then also south toward Beeville and Victoria. Visibility is low as a half a mile in Uvalde, a quarter of a mile in Rock Springs, down to a mile in Kerrville. Let's zoom into San Antonio, really seeing some patchy fog out west toward Port S.A. and Hondo, but especially up northwest toward Bernie Sage Airfield, right on that Kendall and Bear County line. Visibility is as low as a quarter of a mile. So some fog out there early this morning. And again, you'll need that light jacket. 52 in Bernie, 55 in Bulverde, 56 in Canyon Lake, 57 in Hondo. Good morning in Kerrville. It's 53 degrees, 56 in Converse. In your KSAT 12 hour forecast today, that fog should lift after about sunrise. We'll start to see that fog lift by 10. We'll have peaks of sunshine, 61 degrees. Those clouds are going to be a bit more stubborn than they were yesterday, but we will see some sun, especially in the afternoon when we'll warm up into the 70s. It'll be 75 degrees this afternoon in San Antonio. Elsewhere, we'll be looking at highs right around about 78 in Del Rio, 75 in Pleasanton, 75 in Gonzales, 73 in Canyon Lake, and around San Antonio, temperatures just a bit below the average of 79. It'll be 77 in Hondo and Rio Medina, 77 in Nixon, Smiley, 75 Bulverde, Bernie, and 73 in Holotus. Now, there is the potential for some storms tomorrow. Scattered showers and storms. Coverage is only going to be about 40%, so there's a better chance that you'll miss out on the rain than you'll get the rain tomorrow, but I do want to walk you through the future cast for the day tomorrow. Let's start early in the morning, right around the time of the morning commute. I think we'll have a few streamer showers out there early in the morning, so a couple of people will need to put on their windshield wipers once or twice. Coverage will only be about 30% during the morning commute. Then, as we head into the afternoon, there are going to be some storms up north in the hill country that try to push south through uh, the local hill country here around our viewing area. This is a big if. If those storms don't develop, then our chance for rain in the afternoon is practically zero. But if they do develop, those storms will be moving south about 40% coverage in the afternoon. Better rain chances west and northwest of San Antonio. But even by the evening commute, we could have a few rumbles of thunder locally around San Antonio. Coverage again lower, only 40%. And the further east you go, like out toward Hallettsville, no real significant chances for rain. By the evening, those uh, rain chances will be away, uh, it will go away. And the thing is, um, if we do end up with a st shower or storm, it could have some smaller hail with it. We'll keep an eye on things. Again, a highly conditional forecast. If those storms don't develop up north in the hill country, it's not going to happen tomorrow. But what we are going to see in the week ahead is that temperatures will steadily rise. We'll be back into the 80s by Thursday and Friday. And some good news is, is we don't anticipate humidity for most of the week. Now it will become humid on Friday and Saturday, but for most of the week, just pleasant weather after that chance for scattered showers and storms tomorrow. It's going to be a really nice week with morning lows in the 50s, afternoons in the 70s and low 80s, guys. Beautiful, perfect spring weather. Great for today. Again, yeah. if you're if you're wondering where the sun is as you step outside, just wait. It's going to be sunnier in the afternoon today. Thank you, Sarah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sarah. 648, 56 degrees. Just ahead, the San Antonio Brahmas. Yeah, they're having a rough season so far. We're yeah. not going to sugarcoat that part, <laughs> but they still have a shot at making the playoffs. Remember, the championship game is here in San Antonio, so it would be really cool if they were able to participate. We're going to have the latest on what happens today and a three-game homestand at the Dome. Taking a look outside with Trans Guide, just like Sarah kind of mentioned earlier about that fog that's hanging around early this morning. You can see it on just some of our Trans Guide cameras further north up. Uh, but if any incidents, not a lot of traffic on the roads right now, but I'm sure people will be getting up early, heading to mass and services. Just be careful out there. If anything pops up, we'll let you know about it. Good morning and welcome back to the two best teams in the USL's Western Conference going head to head last night at Toyota Field. So we got SAFC taking on San Sacramento Republic FC. Jordan Farr tested early and often in this one. Tenth minute, an awkward sliding save, keeping the game scoreless. Four minutes later, Christian Pirano has a chance to open things up, ripping a shot from inside the box right off the crossbar and out so close yet so far nothing yet. San Antonio getting another great look in the 20th minute but can't convert. No scoring in this one but San Antonio defends home field with a scoreless draw. All right, the rebirth of the XFL has not been kind to our San Antonio Brahmas. They enter week eight with a season record of two and five. But believe it or not, they're still in the hunt for a playoff spot. 
San Antonio now just a game and a half behind the Arlington Renegades for that second spot in the XFL South. Only two, game behind, two games behind the Houston Roughnecks. Now, they come to the Dome this afternoon. The Brahmas start a three-game homestand at the Dome. So now a perfect time to step up and shake things up. I know the guys are extremely motivated uh, coming after a disappointing loss in Vegas. Um, it's a divisional game, of course. So uh, there's, a, there's a lot at stake in this game. Um, I know Houston's on a, a three-game losing streak right now. Uh, we get an opportunity uh, to get a, a chance to, to go down in, in San Antonio in front of our home crowd. It's going to be a big game. Yeah, let's capitalize on that losing streak. Jack Cohen back from that injury. He's going to start a quarterback kickoff at the Dome, set for 2 p.m. Of course, you can watch the game right here on KSAT 12. And speaking about football, how about some National Arena League action? The San Antonio Gunslingers Opening the action at home against the Carolina Cobras. Game tied 34 late fourth quarter. Arvell Nelson keeping himself one yard score. His fifth total touchdown of the game, making it 41-34 San Antonio. 40 seconds left to play. Cobras get it back two plays later. Charlie McCollum escapes, finds Jalen Rimma making a man miss. Look at that. Strolling down the sideline. End zone 41-yard touchdown. Looks like we're going to OT, but not so fast. Carolina going for two. And the win, no dice. The pass falls incomplete. Gunslingers hanging on to win their opener in a dramatic fashion, 41 to 40. And for all you golf fans out there, due to inclement weather, the third round of the Masters was suspended. Play has been postponed through the morning. The rain made play pretty much impossible. I mean, players will compete the third round this morning, then proceed pretty much immediately into the final round. Most of the field got at least a third of the round in before the rain forced the postponement. And we actually saw yesterday a couple of trees falling down. So play will, will resume with Brooks Kepka leading by four strokes at 13 under. John Rahm second at nine under. Tiger Woods, we were just talking about this. He did make the cut. But we just got word that he has withdrawn from the competition because he has a fitness injury. Yeah. All right. Finally, the mission's wrapping up their three-game season opening series in Tulsa. They fall to the Tulsa Drillers 5-2, to two, the 1-2 and two missions. Return to San Antonio for their home opener at Wolf. Tuesday night, taking on the Frisco Rough Riders. Master is having a tough time with the weather, the trees falling. You know, you have to persist. You win. I think the purse is like $18 million, so. Just a little 18. I can play in the rain for $18 million. I mean, the lottery, Mega Millions is bigger right now. It's 441? Yeah. Did you play? No. Okay, well, there you go. Time now, <laughs> 655, 56 degrees. We'll be right back. Looking ahead. Fiesta, only a couple weeks away, Max. That's right. But at KSAT, we can already hear and see the signs, the citywide celebration. All right, so we're clearly excited about Fiesta. We already started collecting medals. Yeah. Got to give a shout out to uh, South Texas Blood and Tissue Center. They have a medal it, that's it's, like, it's huge. And it's it, huge. It, it lets you show uh, your actual blood type, too, which is pretty cool. So we're also excited about the possibility of you joining us for the KSAT Fiesta parties at the Battle of Flowers and Fiesta Flambeau. So tickets for both events on sale right now, ksat.com. Expedite the process, scan the QR code on the screen. It'll take you exactly where you need to go, especially for Battle of Flowers. That's right. So KSAT insiders who buy tickets with us get admission to the exclusive KSAT party, seats to see the parade, to Los Palapas tacos and a drink, plus a chance to mingle with your neighbors and your favorite KSAT weather and news personalities. This is really a good deal. Yeah, I'll be there. It'd be great to meet some of you guys. All right, this morning we are seeing fog out there. Visibility as low as a quarter of a mile in Bernie and as low as a mile in Kerrville. So especially up into the hill country, that's where we're seeing some of the most dense fog. We'll see fog with us through part of this morning, but in the afternoon temperatures will be climbing into the 70s for the high. It's going to be a really great week ahead after the chance for rain tomorrow. Low humidity highs in the 70s and 80s. We'll see you back here at 8. Good morning San Antonio starts right now. All right, we are starting off the Easter Sunday with a live look out there at the Alamo City. A little fog to start your Sunday morning, but 
I'm being told it could end up being a gorgeous day, just like what we saw yesterday. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments for now. Good morning. Happy Easter. It is 8 a.m. Happy Easter. It is Sunday. We know so many people up early for Sunday Easter Mass. We know a lot of people out and about tenting. We're going to check in with Alyssa Cole later in the show. What are your plans for today? I'll probably head out to, to Easter Mass after nice. after the show, and I have a Easter lunch with some friends. Nice. So Sarah Spivey, should uh, Sarah Costa eat that Easter lunch outside? Why not? By that time, around lunch, we're going to start to see some peaks of sunshine. It's going to end up being a pretty nice afternoon for us. We do have to get through this morning, though, and there are areas of fog. Take a look at some of the locations around San Antonio. At the airport, visibility is down to five miles in New Braunfels. Visibility is down to four miles, down to less than half a mile in Bernie and in Kerrville, uh, where we're seeing some thicker fog. In fact, this is I-10 nearer to Comfort as you're heading up north, and you can see that fog is a little bit more dense along I-10 at Comfort. Comfort, uh, I-10 East specifically. Now, however, as I mentioned, we are going to be seeing skies clear. So it's going to be great for any kind of Easter egg hunts or any kind of luncheons or things like that. Some cloud cover at 10 still, but by noon we'll start to see breaks in the in the clouds. Temperatures will warm from the 60s around noon into the low 70s this afternoon. So a light jacket for the first part of the day, but you won't need it during the second part of the day. And coming up in the forecast, we're going to talk about how tomorrow we have a decent chance for some showers and storms. Not nearly as much rain as we saw uh, over the last few days, but we do have that potential on Monday. I'll be walking you through that future cast in just a few minutes. Sarah and Max. Thank you, Sarah. San Antonio police say a drive by shooting ended with a 17 year old in the hospital in critical condition after he was shot in the back. Officers say it happened at this home in the 2500 block of West Caesar Travis Boulevard near South Calavetta Street after 730 last night. So far, police don't have a description of any suspects, but they were given a possible description of a suspect vehicle, a newer model sedan that could have been gray or beige. And the Uvalde CISD interim superintendent Gary Patterson has released a statement about the viral video showing a DPS officer shoving the mother of one of the Robb Elementary victims during a national school walkout day. So this comes after that mother, Ana Rodriguez, attempted to check one of her other children out of the school. In a 677 word statement, Patterson wrote not only a response to the video, but also some context behind their thoughts surrounding several topics. Those topics include anxiety around gun discussions, the pending one year mark at Robb Elementary, and of course the increased media attention, just to name a few of the priorities. Now, Patterson says any discussion around the people in the video, that's gonna remain private and remain confidential. The statement also posed a lot of questions related to the video and other situations surrounding the Robb Elementary shooting, but no solution or answers were given. So DPS released that body cam footage of the same incident as a way to be transparent with the community. The identity of the DPS trooper has not been released and an investigation is underway. Well, that's what we were talking about earlier. It is an annual tradition. Families and friends camping at Brackenridge Park for the holiday weekend. Campers toughing out the cool weather and rainy weather at the start of the weekend. Alyssa Cole joining us live from the area. So, Alyssa, how's it looking out there now? Yes, good morning, Breckenridge Park. Parks all across the city, families and friends are just having a blast wrapping up this Easter weekend. We got a chance to talk to some people as they were walking by with their dogs and their walking sticks, kind of enjoying this Easter Sunday morning. Take a look, you can even see some families are slowly starting to get up and prepare breakfast. One family already has a spread out there and we pan the camera. You can see down there, there's a, a fire. So we're, we're planning to go down there and talk to the those folks and see how their weekend's been going so far. But for the most part, you know, we've even seen police patrolling throughout the area, of course, keeping an eye on everyone. And it is important to note the curfew will resume today at 11 p.m. on Easter Sunday for those camping throughout the different parks in San Antonio. So keep that in mind. But I think people are probably feeling pretty happy, you guys, because it's dry out here. It's not too windy. It feels crisp, refreshing and cool, but we'll get a chance to talk to talk to some campers and find out their experience. We'll talk to them at 830. I'll send it back to you all. Thank you, Alyssa.
Well, every year, the San Antonio Chamber of Commerce participates in SA to DC. It's a trip for local leaders to go to our nation's capital, advocate on our city's behalf. And this year was full of some key priorities. That's why joining us in today's leading SA segment is Dave Peterson, interim president and CEO of the San Antonio Chamber of Commerce. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Happy Easter. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. Happy Easter. So, Mr. Peterson, you recently just came back from the Chamber's annual SA to DC fly-in. Tell me about the trip, you know, why it happened, and what were some of those uh, key priorities that we talked about? Sure, SA to DC is an opportunity for our business and industry leaders uh, to meet with elected officials and agency uh, and administration folks in DC. And we meet with members of Congress, other government officials, and we advocate for business uh, priorities. Uh, from industry, military, education, and community development uh, all across our region. And over the last several years, we've gained a lot of national attention for uh, our attendance in D.C. In last year's trip, we were really one of the first trips to go after the Capitol opened up. And this year, we had about 150 uh, government and business leaders travel with us uh, to D.C. So what were some of the priorities this year? Yeah, so we had... Um, a lot of different priorities. We've uh, got at least 12 different issue teams, everything from aerospace, cybersecurity, education, workforce development, manufacturing, energy, healthcare, on and on, uh, including military affairs. And each team has its own separate distinct priorities. So our councils and committees meet throughout the year and they come up with those priorities that we take to, uh, to DC. We have a list that we developed for our trip to DC. We also have a lift, list for our state uh, priorities. So this trip, we took the, the federal priorities. Uh, our key ones probably uh, are military uh, focused on military installation and missions, ensuring that we continue to be Military City USA and that the Department of Defense knows that we're their efforts. We're also focused on infrastructure investments in the community. We've had several major projects, including uh, the International Airport via Metropolitan Transit, Transit Brooks Development Authority that all hinge on uh, Department of Transportation funding. And we also advocated on the importance of investing in infrastructure in the fast growing corridor, uh, fastest in the nation between San Antonio and Austin. So when you go there, I mean, break it down for us. You know, do you go and you just say, we want this much money and this is how it works? Or is this just years of planning and you go there to just dot the I's and cross the T's? Yeah, Max, if, if only it was so easy to walk in and ask for money and get it, but uh, uh, it, it clearly isn't. So what we do is we establish our priorities and you've said, as you said, some of them carry over year to year. So we've advocated for a direct flight from San Antonio International to uh, Washington Reagan Airport for many, many years. And we did it again this year. Will it happen? We don't know, but we're gonna continue to advocate because that's important to our community. Uh, we advocate across the spectrum on many different things. We've had great successes in the past uh, that were part of this trip. And, you know, it's hard. You can't say that this trip was the reason that these things happened, but you can certainly say that this was a key contributor. Uh, Speaker of the House Ryan, a few years ago, when he met our group, he said, you know, it really sends a message when you get that many people in the room. And so this year we've advocated with the Department of Defense. Uh, for innovative ways to support the DOD and the Air Force with uh, Port San Antonio. In 2015, we were able to get funding for the new federal courthouse. In 2021, VIA was included in the president's budget for the first time. In 2020, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers work plan included the final $26 million reimbursement to Bear County for advancing a portion of the federal share of the mission reach. So uh, a really diverse set of opportunities and we never know which is going to resonate most uh, in D.C., but uh, all of these are important to the community. So we, like I said, we advocate across the spectrum to try to uh, advance San Antonio's opportunities. And so this trip, you know, how long did it last and who specifically did you meet with? I, I know you said DOD, but there's 150 of you out there. So I assume it was a little bit more than that. It certainly was. So, uh <clears throat> the trip kind of varies. The main part of it is from uh, Tuesday through Tuesday and Wednesday, where in the mornings we'll meet in general session with uh, uh, a lot of our elected officials, um, administration officials on areas that matter like broadband uh, and other areas. And in the afternoon, these 12 teams spread out across Capitol Hill. So we go and meet with uh, the members of our congressional delegation, uh, their staffs. We meet with leaders of other congressional uh, conferences, and we set across our 
the uh, the Capitol in both the Senate and the House uh, office buildings and meeting with folks. We also tack a trip on the start of the uh, of the visit to Langley Air Force Base in Virginia, which is the home of Air Combat Command, uh, which is the uh, lead command for uh, 16th Air Force, the cyber command here in San Antonio. And the Thursday after the main body of the trip departs, we do, that's where I talk about Department of Defense. We spend an entire day in the Pentagon meeting with Army, Air Force, and other Department of Defense leaders. Mr. Dave Peterson with the San Antonio Chamber of Commerce, thank you so much for taking time to meet with us on this Easter Sunday. For our viewers, you can watch this full interview online later today on KSAT.com. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Max. Time now, just about 8 11, 56 degrees out. Well, coming up next, we know it is Easter and summer feels a little ways away, but when you're done with all that Easter candy, experts have some tips on how to shed some unwanted weight. Bum, bum, bum. Oh. <laughs> Enjoy the, the chocolate bunnies while you can. Yeah. All right, taking a live look out there at the Alamos. City is foggy to start the morning yesterday. Picture perfect, a chef's kiss of a day. Will we see those conditions later today? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Good morning and welcome back. If you're hoping to shed some pounds before hitting the beach this summer, now's a great time to start. It's time to start. CNN's Mandy Gaither with why rearranging your fridge should be your first step. It can happen to the best of us. Putting on a few pounds over winter isn't uncommon, but you can shed that weight by summer starting now. It doesn't take, you know, two or three months and you can get it done. Dr. Stephen Kopetsky with Mayo Clinic says start by eating healthier. He says to focus on consuming more whole foods, turn to fruits, veggies and legumes. So they have um, pulp and fiber that are non-caloric carbohydrates. So they fill you. Uh, you eat less calories, in other words. Kopetsky says we tend to eat the first things we see in the refrigerator. Rearranging your food may help. And, uh, take the, uh, the two drawers that say fruits and vegetables. Move some things down into there, like the sausages and the bacon and things like that. And then take the fruits and the vegetables and put them up. So when you come home at night, you open the fridge, you see something that's healthy. Stay away from anything ultra processed. If you're craving comfort foods, eat something healthy with it. Limiting alcohol can also cut down on calories. And Kopetsky says to also be smart about being active. If you can't make it to the gym, take the stairs wherever you go. If you're a person that walks maybe 3,000 steps a day, try to increase it to 5,000. Uh, if you're already doing a good, good number of steps, then try to do some intervals. Easing stress is also important. Meditation or deep breathing can help. And don't forget about those Zs. Studies show there's a higher risk of weight gain when you don't get enough sleep. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. All right, so Sarah Spivey, anyone who's yeah. out and about today trying to get those extra steps in, good day to go for a walk? Great day. You know, those clouds, though, today are going to be a little bit more stubborn than they were yesterday. Okay. I mean, we've got areas of fog out there right now, but the thing is, I promise you, we will see some sun in the afternoon. It's going to end up being a really nice Easter for you. Take a look out across the airport right now. You can see that fog there off in the distance. Low cloud deck. It's 56 degrees. Visibility is limited to about 5 miles in San Antonio right now. Those temperatures and those dew points are very close together. Winds are relatively light. That's what's allowed that fog to develop as expected this morning. A visibility down to half a mile in Rock Springs and in Uvalde down to less than a mile and a half in Hondo. Even Del Rio seeing a little bit of haze on the horizon this morning. As we zoom into Bear County, Fog is the densest northwest along I-10 and out west along Highway 90 in western and northwestern Bear County. Still, though, we are seeing visibility as low as four miles in New Braunfels and as low as three miles in Gonzales. It is a cool morning, too. You're going to want that light jacket with you throughout this Easter morning. Temperatures are not going to warm up really significantly until the afternoon. 58 in New Braunfels, 54 in Holotus, 57 in Hondo, 54 in Bandera, and 53 in Kerrville. Here's your KSAT 12-hour forecast. Again, a little bit of patchy fog out there right now. Those clouds will be stubborn, starting to clear, though, around noon when temperatures will be in the low 60s. We'll have east winds today at 5 
5 to 10 miles per hour and then partly cloudy skies in the later part of the afternoon. That's what's going to allow our temperatures to warm up and it'll be 73 for the high and a cool evening tonight with temperatures falling into the 60s after sunset. Here's a look at forecast highs in your neighborhood this Easter Sunday. It'll be 78 in Del Rio, 77 in Uvalde. The low level clouds will be the slowest to erode right over San Antonio. So up in the hill country, it'll be 75 in Kerrville, 75 in New Braunfels, but 73 here in San Antonio. As we take a look at our weather setup across the nation, fairly quiet for most of us with the exception of a thin line of showers from areas in Minnesota all the way down to the panhandle of Texas. This is a trough of uh, it, it low pressure area of low pressure that's elongated that's going to be bringing us bursts of energy tomorrow. So as we look ahead to the future cast tomorrow, I do anticipate at least some rain on the radar during the day. In the early morning, a couple of streamer showers are possible, really only 20 to 30 percent coverage for the morning commute. Some people may have to turn on their windshield wipers. It's the afternoon when we'll be watching some storms that will develop up north to see if they can hold on and move south into our viewing area by the afternoon. If those storms can hold on, they'll be working their way uh, along uh, Highway 90, potentially impacting the evening commute here in San Antonio. Coverage is only going to be about 40% if we do see storms develop, and that is a big if. Again, if those storms don't develop north of us, we won't be seeing any rain in the afternoon. But it is something we're going to be keeping our eye on because those storms that do develop up north, they can be a bit on the stronger side with some small hail possible. So we'll keep an eye on things for you. Make sure you have that case out weather authority app handy. We'll be updating the forecast throughout the day tomorrow. Just know though that beyond that chance for rain tomorrow, uh, really it's going to be a quiet week and a comfortable week too. We'll have cool mornings in the 50s, comfortable afternoons in the 70s and low 80s with low humidity. Again, the biggest hiccup today is that those clouds are going to be a bit stubborn, uh, but we will see sun in the afternoon. This is picture perfect. Yeah, Look at that. Great. It's going to be it's going to end up being a really beautiful Easter Sunday. Thank you, Sarah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sarah. 820, 56 degrees out. Take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, four, five, one, fireball nine, daily four, five, three, one, three, fireball five. All right, your cash five, three, 12, 13, 27, 35, lotto, Texas, six, 10, 11, 23, 27, 33. Here we go. Did you play? I didn't. But it, it's like over, it's almost 200 million. You know what? We're going to do some research. We'll figure out what it's at. If you did play, good luck. Here are your numbers. 11, 22, 24, 51, 60, Powerball 18, Power Play 3. Good luck. We'll be right back. On this Easter... On this Easter Sunday, the city of San Antonio wants to remind people that it, it is illegal to buy, sell, or die baby rabbits, chicks, and ducklings. That's due to an Easter animal law. The sale of baby animals as holiday novelties is illegal in city limits. It's also against the law to dye or stain baby chicks, ducklings, or rabbits, or even to possess animals that have been colored according to ACS. The only exception to the anim Easter animal law applies to licensed hatcheries or businesses raising the animals for commercial purposes. All right, if you're out and about today, don't forget, you're going to see a lot of store closures in your area. Remember, it is Easter Sunday. Some of the places closed, H-E-B, Target, Sam's. We have a full list of what is open and what is not right now. Just head to caseout.com. And you said last night. I did the scramble. I you did, did the, the scramble. <laughs> there are a lot of people at H-E-B doing yeah. that H-E-B Easter scramble, getting everything ready for, you know, the oh, you lunches, dinners. Yeah. Brunch. Need yeah. the brunch. Best I went like at 7.30 last night. Ah! Crowded. Crowded. Fantastic. <laughs> Time now just about 8.26, 56 degrees out. Well, still ahead, we have been tracking pieces of legislation at the state legislature, and one bill pertains to beekeeping. We'll explain what it entails and what it could mean for you and Texas honey. Good morning and happy Easter. I'm Max Massey. I'm Sarah Costa. It's April 9th. Happy Easter Sunday. We know a lot of people are probably up now doing the scavenger egg hunt. Oh, yeah. Headed to mass. Headed to mass. I tried with the, the pastels great. today. I, I tried not to look like a highlighter. It's a happy balance. You had the flowers, which was nice. Yeah. And of course, Sarah Spivey went your direction with the flowers. Our own very floral. Floral. Our there you Easter go. Beautiful. Oh, 
you're my peep. You're my peep. Okay, oh my goodness. take a look outside. You can see that we do have some fog early this morning out there. This is a look at the airport. And as we uh, look up to the northwest, we do have areas of denser fog. Take a look at Bernie Stage Airfield down to quarter mile visibility up at Bernie Stage Airfield down to half a mile visibility in Kerrville. Again, mainly it's uh, just pretty much western Bear County, northwestern Bear County and areas to the west like Hondo that are dealing with the densest fog, although visibility is down to four miles in New Braunfels. In fact, as you head up I-10, this is the picture uh, near Kerrville there along I-10. So deep into the hill country, we do have some of this fog, but as we look at temperatures, it's 58 in New Braunfels, 53 in Kerrville, 56 in Uvalde, and 61 in Del Rio. You may want that light jacket with you uh, early this morning as you're heading about the city. Just know, though, that we will be seeing some sun in the afternoon. Here's a look at your Easter Sunday forecast. Again, some patchy fog, but that fog will clear around 10. And then as we take a look into the afternoon, 73 degrees for the high today. So it is going to end up being pretty nice with partly cloudy skies in the afternoon. We just have to get through this cloudy forecast this morning. East winds today at 5 to 15 miles per hour. Coming up in the forecast, we do have a chance for rain tomorrow. I'll give you those details in just a few. Sarah. Sarah, thank you. Three people are in the hospital this morning and a driver is facing charges after an overnight crash on the city's west side. San Antonio police say it happened just after midnight near an auto zone on General McMullen. A vehicle leaving the parking lot T-boned an SUV with four people inside. Three of them are in the hospital in serious condition. The driver is accused of hitting the SUV, was taken into custody under suspicion of driving while intoxicated. Well, a 56-year-old man now in custody, and he's accused of stabbing his father, then barricading himself inside a home on the city's west side. So take a look. This was the situation just after 1030 yesterday morning. What you're looking at is happening in the 7,000 block of Shady Grove Drive. That's near Military Drive and Warbach Road. Now, police say 56-year-old Edward Garcia stabbed his father, then barricaded himself inside that home. Now, the injured man, the 82 year old, was taken by EMS to an area hospital. As for Garcia, the suspect, he's now being held on a $50,000 bond, facing aggravated assault with a deadly weapon and possession of a controlled substance charges. Officers surrounded the home. Eventually, Garcia, the suspect, peacefully surrendered. But a neighbor saw Garcia's 82 year old father right after the stabbing, and that neighbor called 911 for help. He says he was shocked by what happened. Something to do that, especially to your own parents. I think that's something that's tr something triggered it. As for the 82 year old father, he is reportedly in stable condition and he's expected to survive. A new piece of proposed legislation could have a big impact on beekeepers in our area. So proposed Texas House Bill 590 would make it a misdemeanor to label honey Texas honey if it's not exclusively from the Lone Star State. If this proposed bill were to pass, those who mislabel honey could face jail time. Nicole Poor, owner and beekeeper of Twin Lions Ranch in Hondo, thinks that's a step too far. Want to buy Texas honey, it should be from Texas, but I don't think that jail time or anything like that would be necessary. I think a fine would be perfect. So this bill, of course, is promote the sales of Texas honey and keeping things native right here. But right now, HB 590 is being sent to the Senate Water, Agriculture and Rural Affairs Committee for further discussion. In your morning headlines, Pope Francis presided over Easter Mass at the Vatican this morning. So the Vatican Press Office says about 45,000 people, they were present for Easter Mass at the Vatican. The Pope arriving in a wheelchair, he remained seated for most of the Mass. Remember, Pope Francis currently recovering from bronchitis. He was actually just released from the hospital on April 1st. Now to the escalating violence in the Middle East as Jewish, Muslim and Christian holy days converge. Israel is saying rockets were actually launched from Syria into Israeli territory just yesterday. ABC's Matt Gutman has the latest. This morning, tensions rising in the Middle East after a wave of violent attacks across Israel. And now the conflict expanding to a new front, Syria. Israel says six rockets were fired from its northern neighbor. Israel saying it responded with artillery and airstrikes on Syrian military sites. There were no reported casualties, but Syria state media reporting there was damage in their country. The exchange comes after Israel and Palestinian groups traded airstrikes and rockets over Lebanon and Gaza the past week. 
and it follows several attacks on Israeli civilians. In Tel Aviv late Friday, a vehicle plowed into pedestrians on the city's iconic promenade, killing an Italian tourist and injuring at least seven others. The car then flipping over. Israeli officials saying they shot and killed the Israeli-Palestinian driver as he reached for a weapon. Earlier that day, two Israeli sisters killed in a roadside shooting in the West Bank, their mother critically wounded. It comes during one of the holiest and busiest weeks of the year in Jerusalem, where hundreds of thousands congregate to celebrate Ramadan, Passover, and Easter. Palestinian groups say the past week's violence was set off by an Israeli police raid on the Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem's old city. Israeli police facing bursts of fireworks, trying to dislodge protest. And this video seems to show them bashing protesters with their weapons and batons. Hundreds were arrested. This morning's prayer is peaceful. Israel saying it's working on de-escalation. So Israel is not interested in escalation right now, not interested in a war with Hamas or we, if, if the, if debilitating it keeps, them. If it keeps quiet, we'll, we'll stay quiet. I mean, especially in this time, if, if other forces target us or try us, we'll be ready. And it's worth noting that in the exchanges of Palestinian rocket fire and Israeli airstrikes over the past several days, there have been no casualties, which speaks to both sides signaling that they want to de-escalate. And with hundreds of thousands here celebrating Easter Sunday and Passover and Ramadan all at the same time in the same place in Jerusalem's old city, that has gone very smoothly so far. Matt Gutman, ABC News, Jerusalem. A residential building in France collapsed in a loud explosion early this morning, followed by a fire. Right now, it's unknown if there were any deaths. Six people were taken to the hospital. More than 100 firefighters were trying to put out that blaze. Officials in France say two neighboring buildings were partially brought down as one was in danger of collapsing. All right, so it is Easter, and we're going to be talking about a local family tradition, families and friends camping at Brackenridge Park throughout the holiday weekend. It is fun to ride your bike or walk through there, yeah. seeing all the families. So campers, toughing out cool weather throughout the weekend, starting off with rain on Friday. Alyssa Cole joining us live now from Brackenridge Park. Alyssa, how's it looking out there? Yes, Breckenridge Park is slowly waking up this beautiful Sunday morning. It has been really nice. We even got a chance to run into some of our friends, our KSAT insider friends, the Cable family. And before we start talking about their experience here at the park overnight for the holiday weekend, they just want to say good morning and happy Easter. Max, Massey, and Sarah, I don't know if y'all can hear me, but I am such big fans. Thank y'all so much for what y'all do for San Antonio. I watch every single morning, except when I have to work. But I still watch when I come home at 10. I love you guys so much. Yes, and they, I can hear them now. They're, they're <laughs> happy. They're, they're, they're you, saying thank family. you. We love you. And, we, and of course, we just want to know. And they said they love you too. I can hear them in my ear. And they're, they're just saying, you know, uh, how's your weekend been so far? We know it started off a little rainy, but how's the experience been? You know, it, I'm happy you said that because this week we were like, there's rain. We have to cancel the camping trip. But no, we came out yesterday. It's been perfect. Yes. A little bit on the cold oh. side. But, <laughs> <laughs> but that's all right. We bundled in the tents as a family and are going to. Yeah, it all worked out. Spark up the barbecue pits here soon. Yes. And if you all don't mind sharing with me, uh, what do you all get out of this every year? Um, it's 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 a family bonding experience. Um, his family has been doing it for years. My family didn't do anything like this, but it's incredible. It's cousins, it's aunts, it's uncles, it's grandma, it's you know, it's grandpa, it's everything. It's it's a great family bonding experience. We've yes. got the little ones just starting traditions. Yes. We, we're so busy these days, especially with the couple of, you know, uh, two under twos. And we find we get a chance to get the cousins yes. and the family and the aunts and uncles and grandmas yes. to come out here and celebrate Easter. It's, it's our awesome. Youngest. It's his first time here. Yes, he tucked it out, time. baby he Adam. Out. Yes, Adam. He's so sweet. Max, Sarah, I'm going to tell you all, our KSAT Insider family is the best. I mean, you can smell, you know, the, the grill firing up differently, you know, at the different grills around here. I wish I could stay out here, but I know I need to come back. But you all, I appreciate you. Stay, you stay. Yeah. You all. Yes. Happy, happy Easter, San Antonio. Happy yes. Easter, y'all. We love y'all, KSAT. Yes. Oh, happy Easter to everyone back in the studio, too. I just want to join in on the love with the Cable family, but I'll send it back to you all, Max, Sarah. Cable family. You They're guys adorable. rock. Hey, Cable family, you guys can watch this interview and tell Alyssa, let them know they can watch on our KSAT YouTube page. They can see themselves on their favorite morning show. Look at that. Also, their kids are so adorable. So adorable.
Thank you, Alyssa. Okay, also happening today, right next to Brackenridge Park, the San Antonio Zoo is hosting three Easter egg hunts for their egg extravaganza. The hunts are at 10 a.m., noon, and 2 p.m. You need to bring your own basket. The Animal Ambassador team will also be making special appearances with interactive, with interactive animal encounters for both kids and adults. And I know one of their sloths, Sol and Luna, mm. are part of that interactive team. Okay, check this out too while we're talking about the zoo. The San Antonio or the San Diego Zoo is celebrating its newest and cutest residents. So cute. Critically endangered leopard twin cubs. The zoo says the pair were born several weeks ago, but they're now just emerging from their den. And the births are significant because the species has actually been categorized as critically endangered by the International Union for Conservation of Nature. They're native to Russia and China. Precious. Okay, in your morning spotlight, three new Star Wars movies, they are in the works. Don't get me started. I've <laughs> ranted about this at 6.30 this morning. So Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kennedy says the films will take place in actually different time periods. One will be set in deep past, one set to take place 15 years after the events of the 2019 film Rise of Skywalker that I just saw for the first time yesterday. I'm going to keep my comments to myself. The last of the new three films will be set in the present and they will close out the current Disney Plus series, The Mandalorian. You're a huge Star Wars fan. What do you think about this? I'm not like a massive Star Wars you fan. You watched The Mandalorian? No, but I wa I've watched mm -hmm. everything. Um, it's a lot. I, it is, but I, I would say I think they're doing the best with The Mandalorian. Cautious optimism. With, with these the, three. With the Mandalorian. Yeah, okay. So you like the Mandalorian, nothing else. Mm, they're newer stuff, yeah. Okay. You know. Time now, 841, 57 degrees out. All right, coming up next, we'll tell you about some ways you can help the planet and save money at the same time. And speaking of the planet, let's take a live look out there at the Alamo City. We're still waiting for that sun to come out. We do know, like the Cable family, a lot of people out and about this Easter Sunday. We're gonna be full forecast when we come back. Good morning and welcome back. So there are some simple things that you can do around the house. Cut down on the waste, save money, and help the environment. That's right. ABC's Ginger Z has more on how you can do both those things with this Climate Minute. Americans make 294 million tons of trash each year. And about half of that goes straight to the landfill. And the number one thing we send to the landfill? Food. It's a huge problem because when it gets trapped between layers of plastics and other trash, it releases the worst greenhouse gas methane. Studies have shown that the climate footprint of food waste is larger than the entire aviation industry. You can reduce at least a third of your food waste by just taking your food scraps and instead of throwing them in the garbage, try composting. We keep this little bin here until we're ready to take it outside. It is still going to release carbon dioxide when it breaks down, but far less harmful than the methane it'll produce if it went to a landfill. Next priority, get rid of plastic. Less than 10% of plastic gets recycled properly, and plastics in the environment break down into microplastics that then end up in our oceans, the fish we eat, and eventually our bodies. Some studies suggest that this could cause health problems. Dishwasher pods are big, right, but they still have plastic. There are ones that don't. Instead of the throwaway sponge, we've had the silicone sponge, don't at me, for two years. You just wash it in the dishwasher. I have a big goal, plastic free in the shower. So I've still got some leftovers that I'm slowly but surely using and will never buy again because now I have bar shampoo, bar conditioner, bar face soap, and bar body soap. No more plastic. I'm trying to reduce my plastic use it's, as well. Okay. It's very hard, especially with like, you know, the shampoos, right. the face washes, the, the skin makeup, care, everything. the makeup. Yeah, so makeup. I don't know. Well, you, know, you know, you yeah. know about the You're makeup. Learning, yeah. <laughs> okay. Says a man wearing makeup. I mean, you have to. Otherwise, you I would do. just be shiny all the time. <laughs> look true. like Sarah Spivey. Speaking of which, how is the weather out there? Well, the weather's great. Are you saying I'm shiny? I'm shiny not saying that. With just so much joy. I'm saying hey. you're, you're beautiful. All right, I couldn't let that slide. Thank you, Max. Okay, outside right now it is cloudy and we do have some areas of fog this morning around San Antonio, although that fog is really starting to lift. If you've been watching this show for an hour or so, you've noticed that that watchtower there, that there, that airport tower, control tower rather, it was not visible and now it's visible. So the fog is starting to lift 56 degrees outside. We have got some areas of fog though, especially 
west and northwest of San Antonio. Visibility down to a mile in Uvalde, down to half a mile in Kerrville and in Rock Springs. I went ahead and put on the cloud cover here as well because you can see we're, we're kind of socked into more cloud cover than we were to start the day yesterday. So the clouds are going to be a bit more stubborn than they were yesterday. Uh, and if you're heading out in the next hour or so, perhaps for uh, for Easter mass or Easter services, just know that you might run into some areas of patchy fog and grab that light jacket with you too, because I mean, it is cool. Temperatures are generally in the mid fifties around San Antonio and South Central Texas. But as we look at the forecast for the day today, even though those clouds will be stubborn, we do expect to see some sun, especially after noon. Temperatures will be rising into the sixties around noon, and then by the afternoon, we'll be in the seventies with partly cloudy skies guys forecasting a high of 73. Now I did dock that a couple of degrees just because I do think those clouds are going to be a bit more stubborn than initially anticipated, but still it's going to be a pretty pleasant day around San Antonio today and South Central Texas 78 in Del Rio 75 in Rock Springs 77 in Gatula and 73 in Canyon Lake. It'll be 73 in the Lotus 75 in Seguin 75 in Bernie and 75 up in Kerrville. Now we do have a better chance for rain right on the horizon. In fact, tomorrow, 40% chance for scattered showers, perhaps even some thunder showers as well. Now, coverage is not going to be like it was the last uh, rain event on Thursday and Friday where we had widespread rain. We're only looking at about 30, 40 percent coverage and I can take you through the future cast here. First, let's start with early tomorrow morning, right around the time of the morning commute. I do think we could have a couple of streamer showers out there. About 30 percent coverage might need to turn on your windshield wipers once or twice during the morning commute, but it's not going to be a crippling morning commute with the rain. Then as we head into the afternoon, we'll be watching some storms that will have developed up in North Texas. They have the potential to sink south into the hill country and into San Antonio. The better rain chances tomorrow will be west of San Antonio areas east, not really seeing a ton of rain tomorrow. Now, as I take you through the future class cast closer to the middle of the afternoon, again, if those storms can hold on, it would be west of San Antonio and even into the Alamo City close to the time of uh, the evening commute scattered. Not everyone is going to see rain tomorrow. Again, coverage will only be about 40%. Then we'll be looking at a nice and steady warm up over the week ahead. Temperatures will be back into the 80s by Thursday and Friday. And the good news is we do not see a ton of humidity in the forecast as well. We'll have cool mornings in the 50s, comfortable afternoons in the upper 70s and low 80s. And with that chance for that rain tomorrow, again, it's going to be highly conditional. If those storms develop north of us, then we could see some rain. If they don't develop, no rain chances at all for us in San Antonio tomorrow. We'll continue to keep you updated on air online and on my favorite app. And I'm not just saying that the case at weather authority app. I like that app too. It's pretty great. It's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. 851 57 degrees out. Coming up tomorrow on GMSA, many of our tech devices are full of emails, pictures, uh, and files. Ugh, I know. <laughs> well, are you one of those people that have like a thousand unread emails? Uh, no, no, I'm not. <laughs> you have to think about that one. I had to think about it. I, I, pictures, yes, okay. lots of duplicate pictures. Yeah. So we'll tell you why now might be a good time to get digitally organized. All right, busting out the big bunny here for Sarah Costa. Ah! <laughs> so much. Terrifying. Some patchy fog will be clearing. It's going to stay fairly cloudy until the afternoon. So be patient with those clouds. They're going to erode. We'll be up to 73 this afternoon with some sun. East winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. And then we'll be looking at a cooler evening with temperatures in the 60s. We have yet to get the pollen count in, but as soon as we do, I will be posting that online on our social media accounts. We'll give that pollen count to you as soon as we get that pollen count in this evening. Easter Sunday. Otherwise, some scattered showers and maybe even a thunder shower or two tomorrow. Coverage is only 40%, but that's about the biggest hiccup in the week ahead. We're going to have cool mornings, comfortable afternoons, and low humidity as we gradually warm back up into the low 80s. Before we go, Max, please tell San Antonio what you were calling peeps all day yesterday because, because you couldn't think of the name. I had a brain forgetting moment and called peeps sugar bunnies, sugar rabbits. Sugar rabbits. So all you out there, happy Easter. Enjoy.